Yeah, so I actually um, have a biology and neuroscience background from undergrad. Um, I actually initially started with bio biochemistry and molecular biology. So I did a lot of, um, you know, bench work, uh, wet lab type of work. And then I realized that I was really interested in the brain uh, in trying to kind of have these big questions uh, really earlier on as undergrad. Um, and initially was hoping to go into an MD, PhD route and pursue neurosurgery and all of that. Um, but then quickly I realized how much I wanted to do um, research. Yeah, so I've been doing uh, work in epilepsy for the past about seven years. Um, I typically, um, one of my interests is to look into the impact of um, epilepsy, um, the seizures, the surgery, medications on cognition, also quality of life and mood. Um, so a lot of my research has been focused on really understanding individual differences um, within this population. Um, so we know that epilepsy doesn't impact everyone the same, right? Um, and that could drive, you know, uh, it could drive interventions, it can drive um, surgery and things like that. So um, that's what I kind of dive in is to really investigate one, how seizures and medications and treatment impact cognition, but also what, what is that variability across patients? Yeah, so right now, um, as an intern, it's clinical, so it's full time. Uh, we only do this um, out of the five to six years that we do a doctorate degree. The last year is a clinical internship. Uh, typically, the years prior, we're doing a combination of coursework, research, and clinical work. So one of the challenges has been to be clinical full time. And as someone who's really interested in research, trying to find time to do research on the side. We work with patients, so we really understand what the cognitive impairments, the cognitive deficits look like. Um, we typically do these neuropsychological evaluations um, to diagnose dementia, to diagnose other cognitive disorders. So it really informs our research questions. And because with, with patients uh, for pretty long amounts of time, we're able to come up with questions that are um, that are influenced by what the patient is experiencing. And So I had a huge detour. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I was thinking MD, PhD, and then I was thinking PhD um, in more of the basic sciences. And while I was, you know, after graduating and I was in a you know lab, animal behavior lab, I came across a book um, by Oliver Sass, who's a neurologist, mm -hmm. uh, who has these really interesting cases, vignettes of um very uh, atypical neurological conditions uh, and how, you know, when things go bad in the brain, what happens? And that was so intriguing for me. And I'm like, I really do want that clinical piece. I want to see how when things go wrong with the brain, how that plays out in, on a patient and just kind of seeing that um, live in action. And I've seen some very cool, interesting cases, uh, very similar to, to what has been described in Dr. Uh, Sack's book. Um, so I, that's when I kind of did my detour from going into basic science, working with animals to actually deciding to work with humans. So I, after the master's, I applied to doctoral programs. I'll say before the master's, I did apply, didn't get any interviews. And that's when I decided to get the master's. So I know a lot of students may go through different uh, cycles. And I think it's, it's, it's more common to, multi to apply multiple times. Um, so the second time that I did apply, I had more focused interest in epilepsy and, and more identified advisors that I could work with. Um, and yeah, so I'm finishing up my, my doctoral degree right now and, and moving on to doing the postdoc with in your psychology and your imaging. Yeah, for me, there were several reasons. Um, one of first generation. So um, I understood that kind of for achieving a higher education degree was something that was a value of mine and a value of, of my family. Um, and also to understanding that some of the big questions that I wanted to ask and some of the things may have may require to be a principal investigator and apply for NIH funding. Mm -hmm. 
Um, as someone who's clinical, um, I see that that's a possibility um, for people interested in your imaging. For me specifically, because I want to mentor and I want to be an advisor uh, and kind of help train the next generation, <clears throat> staying in academia was very important. Um, also too, because of the clinical aspects, I do evaluations with Spanish speaking patients as a native Spanish speaker. So that was another aspect to me that's kind of like, um, for now, um, influencing me to stay in academia. However, even if you're in academia, you could also, um, you know, work in policy, you could be do clinical trials with uh, drug companies. So there's a lot of things, is, as you mentioned, it's not just one path. Um, seek mentors. Um, I think we have this notion that we only like have this one mentor, the person that we work with all the time. Um, but I think it's so important and, you know, to, I call it a village of mentors, having multiple people with multiple perspective. And as you mentioned, that have different paths um, that, you know, perhaps uh, it took them a different way to get there or they're doing different things, um, especially if you're interested in different career paths having mentors that have different career paths, right? Uh, for you to get those very diverse perspectives. 